Onaka. At the infamous Black Spire outpost on Batu, Hondo Onaka started Onaka Transport Solutions to run the contraband throughout the galaxy. Hello and welcome to Central West Corner and today we are reviewing Hondo Onaka. I might have just butchered that name maybe but uh, nonetheless I just call him Hondo the Pirate from Clone Wars or Rebels depending and now uh, a kind of mannequin at Galaxy Edge. So they come out about this time last year for the Galaxy Edge sort of theme parks being released. Kind of a four pack and um, there's always an exclusive figure inside it and Hondo was one of them. Um, and I was kind of thinking I'll probably never get this kind of figure because obviously Clone Wars is dear to my heart and this guy is kind of the heart of it really. Um, but nonetheless they have come out this year maybe thanks to Covid um, but I got mine from Star Action Figures just recently as these just dropped. Um, for about £23 with all the other kind of ones as well that have just come out from Galaxy's Edge. So, looking at the box, we've got him down here in his poncil drawing, Hondo Anaka, him in his blister pack, and up the side here we've got transported from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And on this side, we kind of got the outpost, kind of a wall, I suppose, on one side. He's got the Separatist logo down here, but apparently there is another one with, I think it's either the Rebels or something like that. It's actually got two different variants out there and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading outpost at the top. On the back we've got the pencil drawing with his bio and on this side we've got Hondo Anaka with Hondo O just written in the black. So without further ado let's just crack this bad boy open. Okay so here he is in his blister pack looking pretty fine and dandy I must say. The detail looks excellent. So what I'm gonna do is just pull him out, first impressions before going away for his review. Pull he's in there nice and tight. Yeah, he feels really solid, feels really nice. And the detail on him, it just looks superb. And finally, I don't know if you all know, but one of my favourite alien species is a Weekery, and um, we finally got one. So anyway, going to go away, take his photos, and we'll be back in a minute. Oh, welcome back. So I've been away taking these photos and boy ain't this guy detailed. He looks incredible and he's fantastic. I think Hasbro had done pretty much the best they could do for a Hondo figure and he was part of a four pack which is absolutely insane and now we get him over here for the exclusivity and for those extra bits of money that we need to put in those extra pounds to get that I think really it, it pays kudos because I think after this this guy's going to be a bit hard to get. Um, it comes with one accessory, I think, which is his letdown. Um, it should have come with his little salacious crumb monkey. I can't remember what they're called, but um, he had one in Rebels, no, Clone Wars. And um, it was kind of nice. He could pull it around his neck with the 3.75 figure. But um, nonetheless, without without it, it's still a fantastic looking figure. And what we do, we go through his accessory first. So first of all, he comes with his kind of pirate pistol kind of looking taser gun. And um, it's a nice kind of silver. We've got the gold kind of accents on there as well. And um, no sort of super color bleed or anything on there. So it's pretty good. His trigger finger is on his left hand side and not on his right. So he does hold it there. And his holster is also on the left. And we can just slide that down there. We've got that extra kind of part there to put the sort of um, scope in. And it just clips into place. And then the actual coat is moulded to go around the blaster and the holster, which is really nice. And kind of really, let's go through his looks first, I think. We don't want to ruin this figure as we go through his articulation. And boy, the detail on here is absolutely insane. Starting off on his sort of helmet, which is kind of like a kind of tortoise shell, kind of crown that we've got going on there. Going down into his dreadlocks. And painted on these bits are the purples. Some bits here are not painted, 
but um, we can do away with that. We've got a silver one here on the side, and a silver one here. We've got these extra horn bits coming around, which is a different paint job to the rest. Those translucent goggles, they're not removable, unfortunately. They are stuck in place. But um, yeah, it just looks absolutely great. And just seeing those eyes just on the inside as well. Going down, we've got this kind of rib look on the top of his coat, all the way down. It's kind of like a bluey kind of gray. And going over the sort of trench coat, really, he looks like he could be actually part of um, Star Lord's team, to be honest. So underneath, we've got his torso and the necklace, and going into this sort of beige top. Going down into the belt, and on the back as well. It's just the same, but the coat's quite, quite of a thick kind of plastic, so you can't got. It's not a lot of movability in there, but uh, it's just a plain there. Plain back on the trousers, holster going around his leg, and it is glued and pegged into place as well. Down on the boots, I think the boots could do with a bit of a wash on there. They are a bit grey, a bit basic, and they're looking a bit plain. And then onto the coat as well and onto his arm part. So all these bits here are painted. We have got these extra belts and stuff on here, which I think really could do with a wash afterwards, just to bring out that detail a little bit more. These extra kind of sort of clip bits on the back. And his arms got these kind of wrist braces on here. And it's actually got a, a weathering effect over the top, which looks really nice. And the same on this side. So with Hondo himself, his articulation, he can look down this far he can look back only this far due to the sort of dreads and his long chin but he can look left and right which is quite nice he hasn't got so lower neck swagger on there really it's, it has got it it is, it is a different mold to the neck but um, it just doesn't move there's no butterfly or well, shoulders here all we've got is swivel all around and they come up this far we've got rotation at the elbow one single hinge but it does come up more than 90 degrees We've got the rotation at the wrist and it's also on a hinge. The waist is just underneath the breastbone, comes around here, bends down quite a bit and it comes back up, not so much, but that's due to the coat itself. You can kick forward this far and that's the one with the holster and come back this far. We've got an upper five swivel, we've got a double jointed knee and then also we've got a rocker and a pivot, which is pretty cool as well. And um, yeah, it's just really nice to have this guy and actually a background character that isn't really sort of, um, well, just sort of main character really. It's just kind of nice to have those extra sort of ones that are in the background that are just sort of a part of a story. I remember when Hondo first came out in um, Clone Wars actually, that I just thought, oh my God, it's one of those typical, even though it was before Disney, it was one of those typical kind of like husky kind of, quirky voices you know and stuff like that but actually no he actually become quite a main character in the storyline and and in also into um rebels as well which is pretty cool but um now he's immortalized in the plastic form in our six inch shelf which is fantastic would i recommend this figure hell yeah why is 23 pounds at the moment he's only going to get more expensive and then probably just disappear into the bush so thanks once again for joining me on this one. You can comment down below, you can subscribe, you can follow me on Instagram, or where my description, well, with the link in the description. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.